What's going on everybody? It's your boy Spencer and today I thought I'd look at this new little archetype that's been announced and I'm actually a little behind. Uh, I'm not going to do... I'm probably going to try to do snake rank gameplay but I still am interested in doing some of the new pendulum monster like just kind of looking at it card by card but we'll see. In any case this is the new Magiki. <laughs> I, I want to I wanna have like a nickname for it because that sounds weird. Magiki. Magic key. That's probably what it is. I mean, that's not what it's going to be its name of, but I think that's what they're going for here. But this is going to be in the same set that the bear, the space bear, the bear tie, whatever they call it, archetype is going to be in. But I thought I'd take a look. It's actually kind of interesting. I briefly, briefly went over the cards. Look, like there's a lot of different su different summoning mechanics, which was kind of fascinating. Uh, that's why it really caught my eye when I wanted to do this video today. And it's all based around vanilla monsters. And vanilla monsters have some pretty decent support. I mean, being able to special summon from the from the deck with unexpected die obviously is quite good. But let's see what they got going on here. Uh, it really feels like a DDD type of deck, and that really excites me. So this might be one that I'm uh, going to be going in on. And anytime you see a ritual monster here, you know Tritron is going to be uh, clumped in with it forever. We'll see if it was meant to do that. If they're trying to make it its own thing, but. Let's look at the description, actually, of this vanilla monster with 1,900 attack, 1,900 defense. Be great if it was 2,000, but, you know, uh, I think that's pretty good. The fact that at least it's 1,900. That'll get you over, like, barrier statues and all that kind of stuff, which is really important. Every person is brimming with potential. To go or to stop, to close or to open depends on yourself. There are many doors in this dazzling world. What opens them is a magical key. Two keys and one door. Two wills and one form. The door is open, the world shall be connected, and enorm enormous power shall reveal itself. Uh, if there's, I'm going to see if I can find a little bit of lore on this. I've actually wanted to do some lore videos for quite some time. I don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh! archetype lore, uh, but I, I know the information's out there, and some of it I think could be pretty cool. You know, you'll have to let me know if there's something that you want to me discuss about, like the background and what this stuff means. But anyways, here is the, the ritual monster. 2,000 attack, 2,200 defense is a, a little bad, but I guess only one Drytron monster, right? Uh, but you can visual summon this card with any magic key. M map te. <laughs> you can only use the first and second effects of the first effect of this card's name once per turn. Okay, I don't know why they didn't just say both, but I'm sure it will. First effect: If this card is ritual summoned, you can add one magic key card from your deck to your hand. Very nice. It replaces itself with the ritual spell. Uh, which is cool, I suppose. Uh, and also, yeah, it, it's pretty good. And it's a machine. Is this supposed to be with Drytron? Is that what the whole point of this is? Uh, <laughs> second effect, once per turn, when an attack is declared involving this card, and an opponent's monster with the same attribute as a normal monster or magic key monster in your graveyard. Is this a dark? Uh, well, okay. I mean, it's about as good as you could ever ask for, right? Uh, but that's really weird. You can place any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of the deck, and if you do, negate that opponent's monster, monster's effects until the end of this turn. Then draw cards equal to the number of cards you placed. Uh, it's like a magic mallet without the fact that magic mallet doesn't place. It's it's a moray of greed, but it's any cards. Um, I mean, it has to be an attack, and you know you can proctor it. So I mean, you can fix your hand. I'm not sure how great that is, but I mean, being able to add a card and on top of this being able to fix your hand a little bit it is good. We'll see how easy it is to ritual summon like in archetype or I don't know, but we'll see. That, that's an okay card. It's not bad, I'll tell you that. At least in my opinion, of course. This is another ritual monster, machine ritual. And you can summon ritual summon this card with any magic key map to you can only use the second and third effect of this card's name once per turn. Gains 300 attack for each monster attribute in your graveyard, so obviously this whole archetype is centered around different attributes. That's an earth, that's a dark, so so far we have dark and earth, and that's a dark too, this is a wind, alright. I don't know how easy it is going to be to get them all in the graveyard on the same turn, but okay. But that doesn't seem like the important effect. When your opponent activates the effect of a monster with the same attribute as a monster in your graveyard, and you control this ritual summoned this card using monsters with two or more attributes, quick effect, you can negate the activation if you do destroy the monster. Again, I don't 
I mean, when you ritual summon, okay, this is probably going to go in the graveyard. So Dark is going to be in the graveyard. Uh, there's no other monsters in archetype yet, so no main deck monsters. But again, it doesn't have to be uh, magic key monsters with different attributes. It's just unfortunate because Drytron, a lot of the times, you'll special summon this with one Drytron monster. So I guess they're trying to say, like, hey, don't use Drytron, these are monsters. I don't know. But I would say in the pure version of this deck, whenever that may be, or whatever cards may come from that, I mean, it's good negating a monster, um, not targeting either. If this Ritual Summon card is sent to the graveyard, you can have one Magic Key monster from your deck to your hand. So the good thing about the Ritual Monsters is that, is that they're all about replacing themselves. The, the advantage that you lose by Ritual Summoning or by losing the monster itself is replaced. Very good. Uh, so they've obviously learned from the past of like the weaknesses of Ritual Summoning. But this deck, like I said, is like kind of like the EDs. There's no Synchros, I don't think. But they also have Fusion Monsters. One Magic Key Monster plus one non-token normal monster. Interesting. Okay. Uh, you can only use... The, I wonder what other main deck monsters this deck is going to have. You can only use this first effect of this card's name once per turn. If this card is fusion summoned, you can add one magic key uh, ritual spell from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, what? Why can't it just say... Oh, that stinks. I mean, it doesn't stink, but it stinks. It stinks pretty bad. Um, because it should be from the deck to your hand. Why is this not a searcher for the ritual spell? Once per turn, you can target one opponent's attack position monster with the same attribute as a normal monster or magic key monster in your graveyard. Change it to defense position. If you do, it loses a thousand attack. Banish any monster destroyed by battle with this card. It's only 2200 attack. I'm going to go ahead and say that this, and it's a dark, it's not even a different attribute. This should be like a water or something. This is by far the worst card that I've read so far to me. If you guys feel differently, I don't know. Here is a Ritual Monster at 2800 attack, so this deck definitely has a problem with the attack barrier. That's for sure. Like None of these are able to get over big boys. Uh, plus one non-token normal monster. When this card is Fusion Summon, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects, so it has a uh, Egyptian God effect. Very cool. Once per turn, you can target one normal monster or one magic key monster in your graveyard. Destroy all monsters your opponent controls with the same attribute. See, that seems a lot better. That's really good. It's not a quick effect, unfortunately, but this seems like a going second deck just in general to me. Uh, once per turn, if your opponent's monster with the same attribute as a monster in your graveyard is destroyed by battle or card effect. If an opponent's monster with the same attribute as a monster in your graveyard is destroyed by battle or card effect, and you control this fusion summon monster using monsters or two or more attributes as material, you can draw one card. So if you destroy their monster and you have that attribute in your graveyard, you can draw one card. Okay. This is a decent card. I mean, having a Raigeki in the form of a monster is okay. None of these are quick effects, which kind of stinks, but okay. This is the fusion spell card. Fusion summon one magic key fusion monster from your extra deck. Using monsters from your hand or field as fusion material or Ritual Summon one Magic Key Ritual Monster from your hand by tributing monsters from your hand or field who levels equal or exceed the level of the Ritual Monster. If you control a normal monster, you can also send one normal monster from your deck to the graveyard as fusion material or as one of the monsters required for the Ritual Summon. Okay, if you control a normal monster. It doesn't seem like, okay, well, first of all, there are no other monsters, so you're always going to be controlling a normal monster to make this happen. So, I mean, that's kind of their way of saying, hey, here's a new way to Ritual Summon or Fusion, which is cool. It's actually not a bad thing, I think, at all. And, of course, there's a Field Spell. Konami wants every archetype to have a Field Spell now. Um, but we'll see that in a second. Man, I mean, it goes back to the original trope of why Ritual Monsters aren't good. But, fortunately, these... Fortunately, the first one searches upon Ritual Summon and also sculpts your hand. Uh, and then also this one, is, if it's sent to the graveyard too, so I think if you ritual summon it and then you fusion summon it or if you go backwards, I, I'm not sure how you're exactly going to play this deck, but this is an okay fusion spell and that it's searchable. Not. It's not searchable because that one only grabs it from the graveyard. It's a bit of a mess right now, but I think there's a bit of potential here. I'm not sure. I love the artwork on this actually. It's kind of really good. 
Uh, here's the field spell, uh, Magic Key Unsealing. You can only activate one card with this card's name once per turn. It's great that it's activate and not use. You can only use the third effect of this card's name once per turn. Okay, when this card resolves, you can add one Magic Key monster from your deck to your hand, which is what all field spells do, which is good. The first time each normal monster, it's actually the Drytron one searches everything, I think. Technically, it technically searches everything because they have a spell that special summons from the deck, but okay, that's fine. And eventually, you know, there will be more than just vanilla magic key monsters. It's eluded in this entire archetype. The first time each normal monster you control will be destroyed by battle or card effect each turn. Uh, except tokens, it is not destroyed. Alright, sure. During your main phase, you can play, you can add one magic key fusion from your deck to your hand, then place one card from your hand on, on the bottom of the deck. Very nice. Okay. So it does have a searcher, and it is searchable through terraforming. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think... If anything, this may elude that terraforming is going to come back to three at some point, and maybe Mystic Mind will go to one. I'm not sure. I think everybody would be happy with that. I think Guru would be happy with that. Uh, I don't think, see that being a bad thing. And if they're really going to try to push this, because you you need to be able to search that ritual spell. It's like the deck doesn't work without it. Then this there, this needs to be six of in your deck, on top of the three that you, fusion that you may already have, or maybe you only want to play one. I'm not sure. Uh, normal trap card. You can. Uh, this is connected magic key. Target one normal monster or one magic key monster in your graveyard. Add it to your hand. Then you can apply one of these effects. Fusion summon one magic key fusion monster from your extra deck in defense position using monsters from your hand or field as fusion material or ritual summon uh, using monsters from your hand in defense position by tributing monsters from your hand or field whose levels. So it's the same thing. I don't know why, because these don't act like these don't activate upon summon, do they? Oh, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects. So does okay? Actually, if you can fusion summon this during this turn, when it's fusion summon, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects. So this is actually a negate. Am I wrong? In the comments section, you guys will have to let me know. I could be wrong about that, but I'm going to say. They chain whatever card effect, and then you chain this, and then it's fusion summoned. I don't know if that starts a new chain, actually. I don't know. That's That would be some of you guys who are a lot better at Yu-Gi-Oh than me, but it's unfortunate that these are not quick effects. Uh, this is the last uh, card we have here for the archetype. Magic Key Lock Unlock. You only activate one card with this card's name once per turn. When your opponent activates a spell or trap while you control a Magic Key Ritual Monster or a Magic Key Monster Special Summon from the extra deck, Negate the activation, if you do, destroy that card. Then you can declare one attribute, and if you do, all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls become the declared attribute until the end of this turn. Oh, it's a counter trap. Um, wow, it's so close to being an infernity barrier, right? But I think... Uh, yeah, I get it. I do, but... No, I mean, it's pretty good. And actually, as I'm reading these cards, it really reminds me that this will probably end up being combined with um, Plunder Patrol. They're all about art, about attributes and stuff like that. I'm going to... I don't know if that's what they had in mind, but is anyone else seeing this? Am I crazy? Might be time for me to do some of my wacky doodle lab testing work of this kind of stuff. And then see if it works out that way i don't know you guys see a little bit of a uh, synergy coming there because uh, i know having attributes is huge for them and being able to manipulate that is obviously pretty good there's a lot of setup for this counter trap unfortunately it's not like it should just say magic key man there's like infinity barrier okay like that's uh, like apparently that's like too good i mean that's kind of the whole idea of the archetype you're probably not going to be using this this fusion one but all the other cards are okay. Certainly better than like the Ice Barrier structure deck. And it would have been great to see like this even have its own structure deck. And although I think structure decks are only like kind of cards that are already established. This feels like something in the future that may have it. Be really cool to see them have some, you know, like other, all of the extra deck types, like a Link Monster and Synchros and XYZ. They're getting close to there, but I guess they want to stick with these two. 
although I guess you you don't need a spell card for for uh, synchro and XYZ plays, but I like it. I, I love the artwork. I, I find it pretty fascinating. I, I think the cards do interesting things. Uh, we'll have to see what the other main deck monsters are. If those are good, we have something here. It uh, just depends, but let me know what you guys think about this new archetype, the Magic Key archetype, in the comments down below. Other than that, that's going to do it for today's video, and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful night.